Con ustedes, Sylvan Shop, VP Product Marketing de Picus. Hola a todos los participantes del IT Solutions Day 2022. Soy Sylvan Chop, vicepresidente de marketing de productos de Picus Security. Es un gran honor para mí estar aquí hoy y contarles sobre la importancia de validación de ciberseguridad. Pero para que entiendas algo, tengo que cambiar al inglés ahora. In this session, I'm going to explain you why there is a strong need for a proactive approach to security and how security control validation can help you to improve your cyber resiliency. But first of all, for those who have never heard about Pico Security, we're actually the pioneer in breach and attack simulation. Ever since we have been founded back in 2013, we have been helping customers to validate the efficacy of their security controls by validating or by continuously validating both their offensive and defensive security tools. Originating from Europe, we are actually now um, have a global presence and, and have customers all around the world. So why is there a need for a more proactive approach to security, you may ask? All of us, we have over the past few years, if not decades, we have invested millions of dollars into security tools. First of all, we've started to build a protection layer through firewalls, web application gateways, email gateways. But then we've realized that actually we cannot prevent all the threats out there. And we started to invest into detection controls so that we were able to identify and respond to malicious activity within our environments. The problem with all that is that only 20% of organizations are actually confident that their security controls work as they're supposed to. So that means even though we've invested a lot of money into all of these technologies, we still don't know where our unknowns unknowns are. So the focus on technology has really resulted us in, uh, in remaining reactive, in not understanding where the true hidden residual risks are. And most importantly, Most security leaders, they're not able to answer the question, how secure is my organization today? This is why we suggest a completely different approach, right? Be threat-centric and really put yourself in an attacker's perspective. So what does that mean, right? First of all, you need to understand who are the threat actors that truly matter to you and your organization. And then you want to understand how does your existing security posture um, perform against those threats? Like, are you able to prevent those malicious activities? Are you able to detect them and possibly to respond to them if they would happen in your environment? And only by doing so, by really imitating those uh, um, activities, you're able to truly understand where your known gaps are. And through that, you're able to then take the right decisions have no where to invest next, where to spend your energy, and through that, continuously improve your security posture. So this is not necessarily a new approach, right? We have been doing vulnerability scanning or pen testing, or maybe even red team exercises over the course of the past few years. But the challenge is that many organizations, they only do that on a, on a very you know, infrequent basis maybe once a quarter, once a year, primarily driven through compliance. And through that, they only have a point in time perspective on, on, on their security posture, and they're not able to implement this on a, on a continuous basis, and through that, proactively improve their security posture. And this is really the challenge of some of, of the, the approaches that we, we have been pursuing for a while. And that's why we truly believe in today's environment where the attack landscape is more sophisticated than ever before, we truly need to start validating 
our security and particularly our security controls in an automated way on a continuous basis as best and effectively as possible. And this is truly what I'm now going to talk to you in more detail, how you can actually leverage such tools, such capabilities, and, and improve your security posture through that. So what is the PICO's security's approach to security control validation? Now, some of you may know PICOS already. You, we've been in, in your market for, for a while, thanks to, to our um, partnership with MAPS as well. But we've just recently actually released a new platform, a new way of, of how to, to serve our um, security control validation capabilities to, to our customers. And I want to front load this to you right away here because, you know, as, as said, some of you may have known us for a while. And, and maybe, you know, like you may be asking yourself, what's now new with Picos? And our new platform has really been built around those four principles here. Because first of all, what we see some of challenges in the market is that breach and attack simulation tools or particularly security control validation have become very complex. And, they, and customers have actually started to struggle to really leverage the best of, um, of the capabilities because they require a lot of effort, a lot of know-how to, to um, maintain, to operate, and to make sure that they're able to simulate the latest threats. But at Picos, we really believe that actually these tools should be there to support you and not make your lives even more complicated. And this is why we truly want to, uh, or we truly believe in providing a platform that is really simple to use. Within just three clicks, you can simulate any threat that, that is out there that is relevant to you. And through that, you can really automate you know, the simulation of, of real malicious activity and understand how this impacts your environment. Obviously, it needs to be up to date, right? We don't want you to have to research the latest threats and figure out what kind of activities the, um, they consist of and what um, indicators of compromise you may need to configure in, in the system for, for it to be validated. No, we want to provide you, you know, the latest research that is out there. We provide you templates that you can fire off immediately and that update themselves dynamically as the threat landscape evolves and new information gets, um, uh, uh, gets accessible. So this is why we truly believe we want to provide you an outcome focused way of not just having yet another tool that fires alerts to you and gives you things to do, but we want to provide you a, an overview that um, helps you to actually improve the, the existing security investments to have, to take the most out of your existing technologies by really improving them and, and increasing the, the security uh, based on the findings that we provide you through the, the continuous security control validation. So, but with that, now you have an understanding why like our new platform, you know, it, it's built uh, very modular so that actually customers can easily subscribe to the things they need. It's a cloud-based solution. So very easy to, to access from, from the, the get-go. And, uh, and that's what, um, yeah, that's how we wanna support you in the market to really take the most out of this, um, this concept of, of validating security controls. But let me actually show you in a bit in more detail uh, what this means to you and how you could, could benefit best possible um, with that. So when we look at the breach and attack simulation market overall, um, we believe the security control validation is the, is the primary use case. But there is actually other use cases that are um, emerging more and more that we see customers um, picking up more and more interest in, and that we strongly believe in and that we're pursuing closer. So let me actually dig into those three here, you know, the security control validation, how to, to leverage um, control or, um, you know, security control validation to increase your, your SOC effectiveness but also how you can leverage um, this technology to, to better manage your risk and, and compliance. So let's dive into that in more detail. First of all, on the security control validation side, you know, I've mentioned it before, we all have 
too many technologies in place. There is constant configuration drift um, happening. We or any technology is never as secure as, a, as the first day was implemented. So how can you make sure that actually what you have implemented is really delivering the way that it's supposed to and the way you're, you're actually expecting it to? So how can you actually make sure that you are, are confident um, about the existing tools and that you truly have evidence that they perform than uh, the, the way they, uh, that you expect? So this is why I believe in those simple three steps, you know, simulate using real world threats uh, and, and do this on a continuous basis. Validate your existing controls, be it on the prevention side, but also on the detection side to make sure that you have the locks and the, and the alerts being triggered. And then lastly, as mentioned earlier, it should not just be, you know, um, uh, another tool for, for findings, but we want to provide you really support actionable support to mitigate the gaps that we identified so that that again this is a kind of flywheel effect to help you improve your your security over time so it's really here the goal is with security control validation assess your existing posture understand how well your existing technologies perform and have some fact based you know information so that you can take decisions next decisions in terms of investment, in terms of you know, priorities you, you need to take to further mitigate your risk exposure. Now, the way we do this, actually, we have um, seven attack modules here that span across the entire um, phases of, of a kill chain. So you can simulate the infiltration of um, malicious activity into your network. So how would an attacker potentially, you know, compromise your environment? So we have, you know, se um, separately licensed modules for network infiltration, for email infiltration, or for activities that get in through a, a vulnerable web application. Once in, in the network, what happens, uh, what can an attacker do um, to exploit in, on an endpoint, be it Windows, Linux, or Mac OS? Or also, what can they do in the cloud? And then we have a module that actually simulates lateral movement attacks and shows you what are the attack path that a potential attacker could take once, once they have gained access to, to your internal environment. And then lastly, you know, um, even more important these days than ever before, what, what would happen if, if data is being exfiltrated from your environment? Would you be able to pretend, prevent that or, or detect that if some of your critical business data or customer data is being exfiltrated from, from your um, own environments? So those are the modules that you can license. And then we'll actually go into more detail um, a bit later. But this is kind of how those individual pieces connect and how you as customers or you as partners can leverage those individual components to, to tailor made it to, to the customer's uh, needs. So here again, as I mentioned earlier, this should never be a point in time exercise. So you should really track your, your score trends, your security trends, and make sure that, that you don't give a security drift a chance. Right. So, for example, here on the top right, we see that there has been a significant drop in your detection um, capabilities over the last few days. And, you know, if you think about this, there could actually be two cases, right? Either it is a new emerging threat that you're now simulating here, but that actually is not yet picked up by your detection tools. So you immediately realize that there is some um, activity out there or some proven threat that in your environment you would not be able to detect yet. So that's the first case. The second case could be that there was a change in any of your um, policies or in your environments, or maybe there has a log source that has stopped kind of sending log information. So there could be anything in your environment that actually prevents you of now properly detecting this activity. And in both cases, you obviously want to know immediately, you want to take action by either, you know, um, improving your existing detection capabilities to cover the new threat as well, 
or obviously um, reverting those changes that have been done um, or adapting the configuration. So you're again able to pick up the detection of, of this malicious activity. So this is where truly, you know, the continuous approach on a daily or weekly basis really makes sense so that you truly have a, a good understanding that whatever is in place works against those real world threats out there. So this was the security control side of things. Now let's shift gears and go to the, the seam side or the security operations side of the, of the park here. The challenge here is pretty much every team is struggling with that. Let's face it, right? Most seam rules or many seam rules are broken. They may work the first day that are implemented, but after a few days, weeks, or months, you know, maybe the syntax has changed or lock source has changed, or maybe the rule is actually not picking up any, any, uh, any information that is being um, sent to your seam. So those rules, they are in your seam, you believe they work, but in fact, they actually don't do. Also, it's proven that AT 84% of um, techniques that are mapped to MITRE attack that are known to be exploited out there, um, that they're missed by seam rules today, right? So if we knew that, if you knew where your gaps are, that's kind of where you can start putting your priorities and really start to, to have better coverage of your detection capabilities. But then also you already pay for your technology, right? You pay for your, your Q radar, your Splunk, whatever you have in place. And, and with it comes a big library of, of rules that you may be able to leverage. But if you don't leverage those default configurations, how can you then really be, be sure that you actually take the most out of your, your products? And then lastly here, I think a very important point is whenever there is a new threat being released, and that unfortunately happens more often than, than not, Security teams around the world struggle to research it, to understand what are the behaviors, what are the TTPs that are being, um, being exploited. And hence, it takes a lot of time for, for any security team to, to build the detection response capabilities in their own environment. And, and this is really time we believe we can support you, that we can take away from, from every security team that is struggling with resources so that they can actually uh, focus on, on matters or, or on topics that are specific to the organization that truly matter for, for their organization at hand. And this is where we, we come in to, to play with the, the security or with our um, solution, because as mentioned earlier, we're not only validating your prevention controls, but we also connect to your seam in, in your life environment and we pull the log information and we correlate those logs with the simulated activity that we, we've simulated before. So by doing so, we directly understand and can show you, do you have the right log information in your seam that is, is needed to actually detect that malicious activity? And if yes, is there actually a rule that picks up on these logs to trigger an alert for your security teams? And if this is not the case, we help you or we provide you information about what lock sources you may want to enable or make sure that they're um, ingesting correctly. And we provide you, as you can see here on the screen, we provide you copy and paste templates of, of um, detection rules that you can directly feed into your existing environment to ensure that you will be able to, um, to detect those threats um, in the next instance. So this is where we really believe that breach and attack simulation is not only about validating what we have in, in terms of prevention, but really enabling and supporting your SOC teams to become more efficient and more effective by, by leveraging the insights that you get through those simulated threats. So I mentioned MITRE attack before. Right, so we, we truly believe it's a, it's a great framework for you to understand, you know, in what stages you have good coverage, both from the protection side as well as the detection, and it may help you to actually understand where may be your biggest gaps. You know, where do you want to invest more um, into building your policies and then tightening down your detection capabilities, 
so that actually an attacker would have less chance of um, getting up to the point of, let's say, encrypting files or, or exfiltrating uh, data. So as you can see here on the screenshot, um, we in this example of you know that um, technique of valid accounts, we we show you that we've actually simulated two actions, um, and both of them have been prevented successfully. But we've then, on top of that, looked into your seam, and we've seen that both of these actions have actually had log information um, in your seam environment. But only one of these, that's the yellow bar, was would, uh, would have been created an alert from, and hence your SOC team most likely would have missed one of these um, activities, unless they have enough resources to do proactive threat hunting. But who has that, right? So that's where we come in. We can say, okay, look, here's the detection rule. You may want to uh, fine tune your capabilities to also detect this action so that you're confident that this is not um, flying below your radar. And now let's get to the, the third point, um, the third use case that I wanna highlight today about risk and compliance management. And you know, I, I kind of dug into it earlier a bit um, about you know, can you as a security leader, can your customers answer the question, how secure are you today? You know, like, um, Probably many of you know the situation, you know, your management calls you, hey, I've read this uh, article right now, and there is a new threat emerged, um, are we secure against it? And you, then, you say, well, I don't know, yes, I hope so, you know, we've just um, updated our signatures and firewalls and IDS and EDR, so I, I trust our vendors that they do their job. But we also all know that it usually takes a few days until signatures and, and policies get updated. Uh, at least a few days or sometimes a few hours. But what if you actually can simulate those threats, those newly emerging threats in your environment right away and truly understand which ones you are already protected against and where you may have gaps, where you may want to put your people on to you know, proactively hunt for indicators so that you can report back to your management and, and show them actually that you're um, that you're performing well and that you are actually uh, that you have evidence that are you that you are secure against this this threat. So here we truly want to provide not just you know all the technical details about what the tool performs and what techniques um, um, perform well or actually are are not prevented or detected and which ones are are um, unsuccessful. But we want to consolidate that information to you and your leadership so that you have evidences and understand how well does your security program work, how well does your ex do your existing investments perform, and, and most importantly, what can and should you do in a, in a next step and iteration. So that's really about it, about the, the overall visibility, the holistic viewpoint on your entire um, security infrastructure um, through, through validated and you know, um, fact-based evidence. Now, many of you, you know, our customers often ask, so what does this mean, right? How can I actually leverage my existing technologies? I've already invested millions into them and I don't wanna have yet another tool. And this is really where we say, we strongly believe and, strong, and put a strong focus on our technology alliance partners, um, because we believe in the end, as I said, we, we don't want to be yet another security tool on your stack, but we wanna be a platform that helps you improve and leverage the full potential of your existing investments. And this is why we integrate with a variety and pretty much you know, most of, of the well-known vendors out there, both from a network security side, as well as SIEM, EDRs, XDRs, and so on and so forth. So we continuously work on increasing our or expanding our partnerships here, uh, but truly the goal is to you know, not only be able to connect to those systems and, and provide you insights, but also provide you the vendor-specific suggestion in how you actually can improve your Palo Alto by enabling this signature, 
or how to improve your detection capabilities on your Splunk instance. So now we have seen a bit, you know, what are the different use cases that we cover with our platform? And I, want, I mentioned earlier already, I wanna just show you briefly how, how actually how easy um, it can be adopted thanks to our modularity, um, both from a technology as well as from a, a licensing point of view. So first of all, basically our customers, they, they buy or acquire the platform, and this can be either cloud-based as a SaaS solution, which is the default, or it can be on an on-premise deployment. And on-premise is particularly interesting for you know, customers that have um, specific compliance requirements where, where they need to be on-premise. This is particularly government or, or also some finance and, and insurance companies. Um, or sometimes you actually want to validate some air gap networks where, um, where, where you don't want any system in there to be connected to the internet. Now, being you know, a SaaS solution here, um, the goal for us is, again, we believe in full updates or you know, like full accessibility to delay the threats. We believe in you leveraging the, the continuous mindset as much as possible. So you always, like with the platform, get the full threat library, you get unlimited number of simulations, um, and, and obviously the risk and, and trend reporting is, is part of, uh, of this default output anyways. Um, one important fact here maybe is the pricing, it scales with the number of employees of a company. So um, yeah, obviously the, the more, uh, or the bigger you are as a company, the, the more complex your environment gets and hence uh, the more expensive the, the price of the platform will be. Now, on top of this platform, um, we provide you the security control uh, validation capabilities. And I mentioned earlier, there is multiple or um, different modules that you can choose from um, based on your needs on today's um, needs and requirements. And, and obviously the focus on where you want to start validating. And that can then be expanded over time as you have more use cases or more uh, different segments of your network that you want to, to validate. Now, as I said earlier, the mitigation part um, or the, the detection part is, is um, super relevant as well. So while the attack modules per default focus on the prevention side, you can then enable the detection validation for either your SIEM or your EDR um, accordingly. So if this is for interest of you, you know, like this is the SOC use case I was uh, alluding to earlier, then you can always add this, this module on top of, of the existing um, attack modules. Then the next step will be not just to focus on the validation, but also on the optimization. And this is where the, the mitigation comes into play and where, again, as, as mentioned earlier, uh, we provide you with very vendor-specific mitigation recommendations. So you can access for your Palo Alto, Fortinet, uh, whatever, um, where we provide you direct um, recommendable actions to improve your security posture. And the same thing, obviously, is available on the detection side, where we have a huge library of detection content, again, vendor-specific, to support you and the, your teams in being more efficient in closing and mitigating those gaps. So now those are the modular, modular um, licensing items that you can um, acquire or buy from or, or, or also resell. Um, but for, for simplicity, we've also created um, some bundles that are more you know, related to particular use cases and this is uh, particularly interesting for, for smaller companies, you know, that want to um, think less about individual line items, but just want to have, um, you know, one prescriptive bundle uh, where we provide them everything that they need. So here, bundle one, kind of the entry level would be everything that you need to fight off ransomware, or let's say to, to validate your capabilities to, de to protect and defend yourself against ransomware. The second one would be everything you need for um, to validate your end user security. So that's focusing on, on network infiltration and, uh, and uh, endpoint um, detections. 
And then if you want to validate the full security posture, including all the modules, that's kind of the third bundle where you get, um, get access to everything um, at, at once. So this is how the licensing works. And now like kind of for you, you know, like, you know, there's a different audience in the room and then and different perspectives. So what does that mean for you, right? How could you get started? So we at Picos, we truly believe nobody should wait to increase their security posture um, until a breach happens, right? So rather start today, be proactive, you know, take learnings from actually, you can understand what, what your posture looks like based on real world threats. And through that, be way more proactive in, in making sure you stack up against them well enough. So depending on, you know, like in which bucket you fall here as an end user, uh, we highly recommend to, to start validating um, today. And uh, for this, we actually have uh, free trials on our website where you can get started immediately. Just sign up for it and um, you can actually access um, the, the threat library and, and some of the attack modules right away, play around with it, and hopefully already get some insights into what your environment looks like. For resellers, um, please get in touch with us um, so that we can talk about a, a partnership. Um, we do have a partner portal, which you can find through our website where you can sign up, access documentation, et cetera, so that you're empowered to, um, to potentially resell Picus. Um, we also provide NFR licenses so that you may be able to play around in your environments and understand um, how the technology uh, may work for you, for you and your customers. And then lastly, MSSPs, you know, especially as we target more mid-sized uh, companies who actually have the exact same problems as the large enterprises, but, but they don't have the same resources. So they as well need, need help. They, they even need more automation. They need even more simpler and more efficient tools to, to support them in their daily struggles. And that's where MSSPs come into play, right? Most often they, they are the ones that provide security services to, to the mid-sized companies. And we've provided some tailor-made you know, offerings for, for you to be able, for example, to um, provide one-off assessments as a door opener. So you can go in, do a one-off assessment and, and help your, your potential customer understand how security control validation can support them. And also to facilitate your user model or your pricing model, we have a user-based pricing that, that uh, allows you to easily add your services on top, add your margins on top, and then to eventually resell that to, um, uh, to your uh, customers. As said here, uh, visit our website, www.picosecurity.com for more details or don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, anytime. So with this, I'm coming towards the end um, and I want to want you to leave with um, five tips on how um, you or your customers can actually improve your, your threat readiness. First of all, leverage continuous valid validation of your security controls to truly understand your, your security gaps. Not just assume that you're secure or that your tools work the way they should but really do this based on evidence, based on facts, and really understand where, you, where your true um, gaps are. Secondly, help reducing attack at well time. Because we all know breaches, they, they affect all of us. They happen at one point in time. So really make sure that once an attacker is inside your environment, that you can reduce the detection or reduce the dwell time to a point where the impact to the business can be minimized. So make sure that you are properly set up to identify and mitigating um, risk as quickly as possible. Thirdly, I mentioned about you know, supercharging your SOC by truly supporting them in, in understanding what matters, you know, what threats are out there that are uh, relevant to your organization and not just give them more load by you know, running penetration tests or, or uh, vulnerability scans by but truly providing them additional uh, guidance and, and the recommendations in how they can actually stack up against what matters to them. 
Fourth, um, again, improve or you know base your work on top of your existing investments, not just rip and replace everything, obviously, but may, make sure that you can understand what you have in there, how well does it perform today, improve their effectiveness, and, and track and monitor you know, that increase of your security over time. And this is truly the evidence that you need for your business, for, for your leadership, for your board to, to really show how you invest the money they provide you in a, in a great manner. And then lastly, you know, by doing all of this, um, we truly believe that you can get more proactive in your security program, that you actually can get out of that firefighting mode and, and just truly, you know, um, uh, rely or, or be, be two steps too late, but that you truly know where to invest next, where to prioritize your resources, and, and through that really, um, or, or the hero in, in, the, in your environment. Alora, estoy al final de mi presentación. Muchas gracias por su atención. Agradecemos a Sylvan Shop por su participación en el IT Solutions Day. Ayúdenos a responder esta rápida encuesta.